Uh, let's go ahead. I want to interact on this passage of scripture. This is out of 1 Corinthians uh, 5, 16, and 17. And in the um, pericope, what's that? It says 2 Corinthians. That's what I said, isn't it? Yeah. Well, that's where it is. 2 Corinthians 5, 16, and 17. In the previous pericope, uh, Paul is kind of being self-reflective about him and where he's come from. And then, then he, he winds up talking about applying that to everybody and and that's particularly clear here host you, you see the i should say this i've had a student ask me i don't think about telling them that but when you see an uppercase greek letter it usually means that it's starting a new pericope or a new section oh, okay. and so that's why you see that uppercase greek letter there so and hosta is a word that means um, this is the logical conclusion. This is the logical inference so of what has gone before. Lots of times it's translated, therefore, uh, something like that. So, hosto, hosta hemas apo tu nin udina oidamin kata sarka. So that, or therefore, we apo tu nin. Um, this is a Greek way of saying from from now on, from now, from this, from now. The reason it's got the article in front of nin is because apo requires a genitive, and nin is an adverb that doesn't have genitive case, right? So it sticks the genitive article in front of it. So from from now, udina, no longer oidemin. This is another verb for, it's like gnosko, I know, only oidemin, uh, oida is always in the perfect. Uh, so we no longer have known kata sarka. We no longer know according to the flesh. So from now on, we no longer know uh, according to the flesh. And if you think about where Paul has come from and where he's got to, Paul had all basically the same information that the apostles that he was persecuting when he was Saul, he had basically the same information that they have. But he looked at that information, and as he looked at it, his conclusion was a dead guy left a bunch of people some teaching was causing trouble. That was his conclusion, right? There's a guy that's dead. Before he died, he fired up a bunch of people, and we've got to quell this. We've got to stop this. But then, then something happened, right? He met Jesus personally on the road to Damascus, the risen Lord. And so then, all of his conclusions get turned around 180 degrees. It's not, these guys are troubling people, but... We need everybody to know this. We need everybody to be aware of this. And the things that he saw were never the same. I think there's a good reason that Paul, Saul, lost his sight for several days. He had to be reoriented in the sense of sight. And I think that's part of what we're seeing here. We no longer look and say what we're seeing this, this bag of bones is not, is not how I know people. It's not how I know. It's not how I know. It, it's not this stuff. And then he goes on to say, to kind of make this even more clear, uh, except, AK is a way, if, and, it's kind of a way you say except in Greek, except we have known, perfect tense, kata sarka, according to the flesh, Christo, Christ. I have known Christ according to the flesh. I met him. You see what I'm saying? He, he, he's, he's real in the flesh. And then he says this, alanin ukete gnosko men, but now we no longer know him in that way. We don't know Jesus according to the flesh like we did, just like we don't know people, according to the flesh. Hosta, then we're back to this inferential, so what's the logic of this? Hosta a tis in Christo, if tis anyone, this is the if, so if anyone is in Christ, I love this, kine katesis, 
Now, when you read this translation in English, we always add a to be verb to make it make sense, right? But there's no to be verb there. It, so that if anyone is in Christ Jesus, he is, we add, a new creation. That's not the way the Greek does it. I love the way Greek does it. Think of it, think of it this way. In Christ, new creation. See that? In Christ, new creation. We're totally different than the vagabonds that we used to be. We're, we're changed. And then he says, Ta archaia per elthen. Archaia. Kind of means the first things, the old things, per elthen. They've gone away. They've gone away. Archaia. I think I, I grew up as a child of the 70s. I mean, I was a teenager of the 70s. You know, I went through high school in the 70s, got married in the 70s. And and even now when I think back, and once in a while I look back at old pictures and I think to myself, Daryl, what were you thinking? <laughs> you know, I went to more than one high school dance rocking a light blue polyester leisure suit. <laughs> Are you with me? Big collar, wide tie. It was awesome. Bell bottom pants, white shoes. Those are all the I would just deal with. Yeah. Uh, even worse, I had a pair of. I'm almost embarrassed to say a pink bell bottom pants with white handprints all over them, and I thought that they were. <laughs> <laughs> Nowadays, I look back at that and I think, that's the old stuff, and I'm glad it's gone. The old-fashioned stuff. The stuff that doesn't matter anymore. It's gone. It's gone away. I don't lose it all at once. It takes a while. I'm growing a little bit all the time. But it's gone. And in the core of me, the important things, it doesn't matter. And then this last phrase, you guys were asking me about a Greek t-shirt. I'm thinking this might be the phrase. Look at it. Idu gigonin kaina. Behold, it has become new. Behold, it has become new. Can you imagine just sporting a shirt that says that? <laughs> it's new. <laughs> it's new, and it's a little bit newer every day that I depend on him. Yeah. Every day that I turn my life over to him. Every day I try to figure out how to let him set my priorities. Because the flesh doesn't matter. The outside shell is not what... I'm worried about, but the spiritual reality that it represents.